Yeah. Um, today we've got a great program scheduled for you. My name is Gail Nahara. I'm with the Bend Chamber of Commerce with their programs and events. We put on uh, programs like this once a month. We have a morning program at Cascade Theatrical Company. How many people have attended that to the theater? It's a fun, fun new venue for us, and we're happy to have them as, as partners for a facility partner, and uh, it's working out really well for us. So uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, several of them, um, Ben Broadband Business Services, Combined Communications. You may have seen their, their media promotions for these events, both on TV and uh, radio. Um, speaker gifts. We have a speaker gift um, that I will be presenting to our speaker. It's from Southlake Specialty Advertising, and it's, a, um, it's just sort of a sack, a shoulder sack. Um, real nice canvas, and, and we're excited to have them as a partner for us. We, we are unable to pay our speakers. It's just not a budgeted item, but being able to give them a thank you gift is, is very welcome. Uh, if in the future any of your businesses would like to be involved in, in anything in the in kind or donation for this kind of a program, we can get you involved as well. We also have uh, lodging for out-of-town speakers through Ameritel, so we're excited to have them as a partner as well. Uh, table sponsors. This table over here would be available for your business to promote what you do in connection with a presentation like this. Not necessarily a competing presentation, but something that would be um, appropriate. Next month we're doing, um, we're talking about multimedia or different kinds of media, social media. And Kelly Walker is our speaker. He was supposed to be attending with us today and I could have introduced him, but he will be here next month and we don't yet have a table sponsor for that, but for our last week, presentation for 2011. We do have a table sponsor, and uh, I'm trying to remember who it is. It's uh, Schwabi, Schwabi Williamson Wyatt uh, Law Firm here in town, so they will be having a presence here as well. So it costs $100, includes two people for this luncheon, so it's really a $50 sponsorship and two $25 tickets to the, to the luncheon. So we'd love to have some um, participation with that. Quickly, I will tell you that around the corner here, we have restrooms. You're welcome to get up at any time and but the restroom is right around the corner. The other one is down that way. It's a lot further away. This one's very close. Cell phones, if I could ask you all to turn your cell phones to silent at this time, we'd be very appreciative. Nobody would be pointing fingers when yours goes off at an inopportune time. And the package that you receive, you receive several things. Uh, a blue sheet, a double-sided blue sheet announcing our next two presentations. So those are just to wet your whistle and get you to think about uh, signing up for those who sign up online. And the other one was a half sheet. It's green, I believe. Yes. And that's our evaluation. At 12.45, I'm going to stand up and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like that. pretty much just like that. I'll walk around the tables and pick those up, and then we'll put them all together. We use them for a drawing. We actually have a couple of great gifts for you today, um, one of which comes from Wendy <laughs> Duncan, and we'll have her explain that later. And the other one is actually a tea bag from our golf tournament, our recent golf tournament from Integra. So we're excited about that as well. So <coughs> happy to have participants with us. So the flyers, um, and now I'm down to the most important person in the room, Evan Dickens, who represents <laughs> Roth, our title sponsor for these uh, presentations for the entire year. We're happy to have him with us, and he's going to introduce our speaker. Thank Evan. you very much, Gail. Definitely not the most important person in the room. That's the person who I'm about to introduce. But first of all, uh, I am Evan Dickens, the manager at the Bend office of Jones and Roth CPAs. We are a full-service CPA and accounting firm uh, in the area. Been in Florida for 10 years. So we recently rebranded, have a nifty new logo, which is visible on the flyer. Uh, our slogan is the right people beside you. It's very simple, and that's our approach to CPA and financial services, having the right professionals beside you for those needs. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Matt Hamlin, the staff accountant in our office, uh, and either Matt or myself would be uh, happy to talk to you guys in more questions. I uh, want to thank Ben Chamber for the opportunity to be the presenting sponsor for the Business Success Program for 2010. And I also want to thank all the supporting sponsors who have uh, made this possible. We're grateful for that. Topic today is uh, probably one of the most universal topics that we could have, which is uh, quite simply stress. I don't know what to think about the fact that when this topic was released, uh, my boss came into my office and threw the flyer on my desk and said, you have to go to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here I am. Uh, our speaker today is Wendy Duncan. She is the most important person in the room. She is a life success consultant and professional coach. She coaches individuals, couples, and corporations on stress elimination. That sounds great, doesn't it? On setting purpose, vision, and goals, as well as self-esteem and self-confidence issues. Her training center is located in Redmond, and she is here today to talk about eliminating your bad stress so you can get more out of your life. Please help me welcome Wendy Duncan.
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Is anybody stressed in the room? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Ben Chamber. Thank you, Evan. Appreciate that introduction. Uh, I'm here today to talk about stress elimination. I consider myself to be an expert, which you're going to learn more about. Uh, I'm just going to ask that if you've never heard some of the things that I'm going to be speaking about today, that you just have an open mind. All right? I'm going to be throwing some new things at you because obviously the old things aren't working. Fair enough? Okay. I uh, was doing a little research. Actually, my, my husband, Bob, who's at the back of the room filming this session, uh, he brought to my attention about a football coach who just had a heart attack caused by stress, or so he thinks. Uh, yeah, I mean, coaches, they have a lot of stress, but you know what? You all have a lot of stress, too. And generally, we're told, you know, you got to get enough sleep. you got to eat well. Exercise. Maybe even have, you know, some downtime. Have some time with your family. Take vacations. Well, I want to tell you a little story. There was a young girl who was about 12 years old, and she's a very normal kid, happy, had friends, loved school. And when she was 12 years old, something really surprising happened to her. She had her first migraine headache. It's a good thing she didn't know then the role that migraines would play in her life for the next 30 years. Her migraines got much worse to the point where she was going to the doctor. She was, of course, given a lot of prescription medications. She was taken to the neurologist. She was given uh, a CT scan to make sure she didn't have a brain tumor. And when she was 17, her neurologist said something very interesting to her. He said, you know, you're going to have to change your thinking. And she thought, why should I have to change my thinking? I am who I am. She really didn't understand what he meant. Well, her migraines got much worse, and luckily, prescription medications got a lot better. So it was, it was to the point she was taking maybe three or four Imitrex injections a week just to lead a normal life. And so she, she pretty much came to terms with that. And then two years ago, she met Bob Proctor. If you've never heard of Bob Proctor, he is uh, really big in the self-help industry. He was in The Secret, and he has devoted his life to studying the human condition. Why do we succeed? Why do we fail? So she met him, and she knew he had talked about headaches and migraines before. And she said, um... You know, excuse me, but you, you were talking about, about headaches, and he says, oh, do you have headaches? And she said, well, yes. I mean, he didn't know to the extent. And he said, well, you made your head ache, and you can make it stop. <laughs> she wanted to kick him in the shins. <laughs> she thought, oh, dude, you have no idea. She'd had migraines for over 30 years. The day that she met Bob Proctor, she was on four prescription medications that cost about $500 a month. And let's not even go into the fact that that was not covered because it was a pre-existing condition. And two over-the-counter medications. Now, it took this lady a year and a half, but she was able to eliminate her migraines and all of the drugs she was taking. Sounds pretty miraculous, doesn't it? Well, since I am that girl, I'm very happy to report to you that what I'm going to share with you was pivotal in my getting better. Is that okay if I share these secrets with you? Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right. I have provided uh, some handouts for you, and if you'd like to take some notes, that's great. Um, but I really want you to just kind of sit back and enjoy and, and soak this up, okay? So here's my first tip. We could try this. How's that? No? That, no? Okay. I thought that was a really good one. <laughs> well, you know what? If I go back 6,000 years in history, 
If I were to talk to all the great thinkers of the world, whether they were psychiatrists or doctors or uh, philosophers, scientists, industrialists, capitalists, they have virtually degree, disagreed on everything except for this one point that I'm going to share with you. And that is, you become what you think about. You become what you think about. Now, uh, I don't know you, but if I asked you to picture your car, an image flashes on the screen of your mind, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I ask you to picture your home, an image flashes on the screen of your mind, doesn't it? Now, it's not the word C-A-R-H-O-M-E. It's, it's actually a picture and another picture. And that's because you and I think in pictures. Now, sir, if I asked you to picture your mind, what image do you get? many quickly <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a mess yeah. yeah you see we don't know what the mind looks like but I know that mind is in every cell of our being mind is movement thought and our body is the manifestation of that movement in action but since you and I think in pictures we've got confusion don't we so I'm going to show you a little graphic, and it's kind of funny looking if you've never seen it. I asked you to have an open mind, right? Okay. I did not come up with this graphic, but this is what we call a stick person or a stick chick if you're a girl. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to say that that top circle is your mind and the bottom circle is the body. Now, there was a doctor uh, in San Antonio, Texas named Thurman Fleet back in 1934. He was the founder of Concept Therapy, and he knew there was more to healing the body than to just perform surgery or to give it medication. He knew that the mind had a lot to do with it. And don't forget, you become what you think about. Now, we're going to take the mind, and we're going to split it up into two parts, the top part being the conscious mind and the bottom part, the subconscious mind. Have you all heard of that before? Yeah. Now, the conscious mind is where you originate thought. It's your intellectual or thinking mind. And the subconscious is your emotional or feeling mind. Now, your conscious mind has the ability to accept or reject any idea. For instance, you can take what I'm telling you right now and you can say, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like that could be. Or you can go, I don't know where this chick came from, but I don't believe it. And that's because you have free will. You can choose. Now... The trickier part is your subconscious mind. It can only accept. Now, why that is so critical is anything we think about, whether it's truth or a lie, the subconscious mind believes it. And generally, we're telling ourselves, well, I can't do that. I'm stressed out. Oh, well, you know, Wendy, there's the economy. You know, everything bad that's going on in the world. And the subconscious mind accepts that. Now, why that's important is your thoughts cause you to feel something, and that sets up a physical vibration in your body. Now, all I'm talking about is, is you know when somebody's in a good mood or a bad mood, right? If you live with somebody and they come home and you go, what's wrong? And they go, nothing. And you know something's wrong. If you have a dog, the dog knows something's wrong, right? That's what I'm talking about. So your thoughts cause you to feel something, that sets up the vibration, and that literally creates all of your results. All of them. Now in my case, my thoughts about life and the pressures that I put on myself, you know, it was never my fault, ever. It was always somebody else's fault. I never took responsibility for my own thoughts, feelings, and actions. And I look to other people to, you know, make me happy. For the women in the room, have you ever said, well, he doesn't make me happy. It's not his job. It's not his job. Okay? It's, it's your job. It's not, not up to somebody else. All right. Now, I'm going to take this a little bit further. You have five physical senses. You can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And conceptually, I could think of those as being hardwired to your conscious mind. Now, it's up until about age six that you filtered information through those physical senses. Like maybe your mom said, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Or, didn't you hear what I said? 
Now, as an adult, you still filter information through those physical senses. For instance, I know how I felt when I saw a plane hit the World Trade Center. I mean, there was no time to put up a filter. I saw that and I thought, are we going to war? You know, what's going on here? And my feelings were that of anxiety, right, intention. That affected my energy, my vibration, and my results were not good that day. They weren't good for a week. And for many Americans, they weren't good for a year. Your thoughts cause your feelings. That sets up the vibration, pushes you into action, and creates the results. And don't forget, you become what you think about. Now, we're going to look at this a little more in depth. You have six intellectual faculties, and those are perception, will, imagination, memory, intuition, and reason. Now, I didn't come up with these, but I can find record of these from way back in the early 1900s. They were probably even in existence before then. And Napoleon Hill wrote about them in Think and Grow Rich. Has anybody read Think and Grow Rich in the room? That, that book was written in the 30s during the time of the Depression. And Napoleon Hill was commissioned by Andrew Carnegie to go around and interview 500 of the world's most successful people during the time of the Depression. So there were people who were finding opportunity, who weren't buying into, you know, the talk of the economy. So I'm going to go, I'm going to touch on perception a little bit at length because I think it's so incredibly important. Now, perception is your point of view. Now, sir, you just came in the room. I'll pick on you. You and I are different ages. We grew up in different cities. We have different parents. And uh, we, went, we had different teachers. Would it stand to reason that your perception about some things might be different than mine purely because of how you were raised? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Does that make you wrong and me right? No. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't make you right or me wrong either. Okay? So we have a different point of view that is colored by our experiences, how we were raised. But your perception about some things can be so critical in dealing with stress. Because we're usually looking at everything that's wrong and bad and and we're listening to all that stuff that's going out there, going on out there. I want to tell you a little story. About seven years ago, I was in real estate school back in Sacramento. And I came home one evening and it was a beautiful spring evening. I can remember it so well. And I checked my mail. And in the mail, there was this little card. And the card read, Come test drive a Lexus and get a free pair of Maui Jim sunglasses. And I'm thinking, cool, I'm going into real estate. A Lexus might be my next car. So I called my friend, Joaquin Castillo. He was my neighbor. And at the time, Joaquin was about 50 years old. He was single. He he didn't have any responsibilities. And he drove a little two-seater BMW convertible. Can I get the picture? So so I called Joaquin, who was always up for a good time. I'm like, hey, Joaquin, let's go test drive a Lexus. And he goes, oh, sure, I'll take you down there. So we go driving down the road, and we had the top down on his BMW, and we had the, the music on, and we were laughing and carrying on. And we pulled into the Lexus dealership. And I see this salesperson coming down the ramp. And I could just tell by his walk that his energy was very low. However, I was not going to be daunted, and I hopped out of the car, and I said, "Uh, I'm here to test drive a Lexus and get my free pair of Maui (laughs) Jims. And the salesperson crosses his arms, and he says, well, I don't think that would be a good idea. I thought, well, why is that? It looked, looked to me like there were plenty of cars on the lot. And I go, well, well, why is that? And he goes, uh, because you've been drinking? <laughs> I hadn't been drinking. Of course, Joaquin pipes up, well, she hasn't been drinking, but I have been. I mean, some help he is, right? <laughs> he would not allow me to drive a car because I was bubbly. Now, you should see me when I really am drinking. I'm even more bubbly. Some of you in the room might know that. So, 
That could have cost him a $50,000 sale, couldn't it? Yeah. Because his perception of me was just because I was bubbly, I must be drunk. And my perception of him was that he would never be any more than an average salesperson because he judged me before he even got to know me. So I went and bought an Infinity Q45 instead. <laughs> All right. Now, will is your ability to focus on something to the exclusion of everything else. Have you ever, have you ever just maybe stared at a candle flame? And you think, wow, that's a cool flame. But then your mind wanders off someplace else. Yeah. It's because your will is not really strong. You know, these are like mental muscles. If you never use them, they grow weak. But I utilized my will when it came to getting over stress. And, and for me, it was kind of easy because when I started to let something get to me, I started to get a headache. And I thought, okay, what's going on here? What am I thinking about? So I'm going to share a couple of points that have been really poignant for me. Listen carefully. This is my top secret. If somebody makes you mad, sad, or glad, you've been had. Hard to hear, isn't it? And I used to allow people to make me mad all the time. Think about that. If you allow someone to make you feel something, you are literally giving your power away, aren't you? I mean, nobody can make you feel something without your permission. So I stopped giving people that permission. And it really was helpful. Okay, top secret number two. What other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> now, I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I cared what other people thought of me. Any people blazers in the room? Uh, be honest. Okay, get over yourself. <laughs> I mean that lovingly. I'm a coach. <laughs> I don't enable. So, so the, the meaning behind that is, though, is that we act a lot of times the way we think we want other people to perceive us, don't we? It's like putting on an act. Well, I've got to act a certain way so that people like me. And I'm telling you, that causes stress. Be yourself. Be authentic. And we already learned that we have a difference of perception just because of how we were raised. You cannot control what other people think of you. You have control over one person and one person only. And that's you. Okay? Well, now imagination is your ability to dream. Okay? It's really cool. You know, like when we were kids, we probably could have spent all day with a cardboard box and popsicle sticks, and we would have used our imagination and just gone hog wild. And as soon as we got to school, it was, hey, Wendy, pay attention, right? Stop daydreaming. You and I were conditioned to put the lid on our imagination, and I'm going to tell you right now, it is one of the most important faculties that you have because you become what you think about. And we have not been taught to utilize that imagination. If you, if you think about this for a second, stay with me. Everything, everything, everything is created on two planes. Once in your mind, your intellect, and the other is on the physical plane. So let's take the Wright brothers. You heard of them, right? First airplane and air. Can you only imagine <laughs> Kitty Hawk? And them taking this plane out onto the field and people are going, <laughs> really? You're going to get that in the air? <laughs> I mean, now, if they had listened to that, they probably would never have even tried. But they didn't care what anybody else thought of them, did they? And they, pers they were persistent, and they got a plane in the air. So, but it was, it was thought of first in their mind, and then it was created on the physical plane. And that's how we live our life. Think about the time you spend planning your vacation. I know you get on the Internet, spend hours looking at all these things and all the packages. And if you're like me, you go on Expedia and all those travel places, right? And you find the best deal. Now, what if you utilize that imagination to think about your life? 
Now, maybe you don't want to be the stressed out person all the time. You know, mine were, mine were migraines, but for many of you, it could be other things, okay? It could be stomach aches, back aches, anxiety, depression. Maybe you have anger management problems or relationship problems. Maybe you're addicted to alcohol or cigarettes or, you know, something else. You know, everybody processes this differently. But these techniques will help you no matter how you are, how you are processing your stress, okay? Who in the room has a perfect memory? Okay, be honest. <laughs> Bob does. He's the only one who's honest. <laughs> I told you these are like mental muscles, right? If you never engage your memory, it's going to grow weak, all right? Now, intuition. I love this. Intuition is your sixth sense. It's your hunch. It's also your ability to pick up on somebody else's energy. I mean, have you ever been in a restaurant and for no reason at all, you look over and somebody's looking right at you? Isn't that crazy? They are sending energy to you and your intuition is picking up on that. How many of you have, um, you pick up the phone and you go, oh, I was just thinking about you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to get into it today, but if I ever coach you, you're going to learn a lot about energy and how we transmit things and thoughts. I bet you all didn't know that thoughts were the most potent energy that you have and that thoughts travel 930,000 times faster than the sound of your voice. You become what you think about. Okay. And reason is your ability to just take a situation. You know, maybe you're at work. And maybe you're having a little bit of a, you know, some, a tiff with somebody. And you think to yourself, you know, what do I need to do here? So reason's really your ability to just take the situation and say, is this, does this serve me or doesn't it? Or if you're making a life decision, is this going to, you know, catapult me into the direction of my dreams or isn't it? Okay? Those are your intellectual faculties. All right, I'm going to show you something really super disturbing. Good thing there are no kids in the room, but I think you all can handle it, okay? We're just going to say that this is your baby's mind, wide open at birth. And everything that, you know, your parents, you know, their, their belief system, their ideals, your grandparents, however they acted, maybe some of your teachers or if somebody ever took care of you, all of their beliefs were literally pouring into your baby's wide open subconscious mind and that is where your self-image was formed. And that is still with you today. So maybe you know some people, they just, they just never quite get on the track. You know, maybe... Um, there's something that they really want to do, but they talk themselves out of it because they don't think they're worthy. I mean, you have only to go <laughs> around this room to find out who, who thinks they're worthy of earning a great deal of money or having success. And my self-image was very poor. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I, you know, I can't pinpoint where it all happened, but I, I've never felt worthy good enough, always needed somebody else to make you happy, you know, and it wasn't until I learned some of these concepts that I was able to rectify that, I was able to change that, I was able to strengthen that, and it didn't happen overnight, it took, in my case, a year and a half, you know, now there are other people who get it a lot faster than I do, <laughs> all right, so this is just really critical to, to question so maybe some of you have heard this story. I think it perfectly describes what I'm talking about. There's this woman, and she goes to bake a ham. And she cuts the ends off the ham before she puts it in a pan to bake it. And she starts to go, why do I do this? This is stupid. Oh, my mom always did it. So she calls her mom. Mom, why is it you always cut the ends off the ham before you put it in a pan to bake it? And she says, well, I don't know, dear. I, I always did it because that's what my mom did. <laughs> so she calls her mom. Mom, why is it you always cut the ends off the ham before you put it in, a pan, in the pan to bake it? 
And her mom said, uh, well, dear, when you were little, we were so poor we couldn't afford a big enough pan to put the ham in, so we cut the ends off before we put it in the pan to bake it. <laughs> Do you see how you might have some ideas that are not serving you? Yeah. I know. It's hard to hear. It's hard to hear, but things like this can really affect you if you don't question it. Now, my, my father is an atheist and my mom's Catholic. Talk about confusion. <laughs> so, and my dad was born in 1930. We just celebrated his 80th birthday. Would it stand to reason that my father's ideals about what his daughter should be doing is different than his daughter's, you think? Yeah. Seriously, I love my dad. But if I listened to everything he said, I would never be doing what I'm doing today. And I'm going to share a story in a little bit that demonstrates even more of that. But you need to know I'm real and that I have lived all of these concepts that I am sharing with you today. Okay? That was a big one, wasn't it? Okay. So no excuses. Um, the next page there is about the cybernetic mechanism. Has anybody ever heard of the cybernetic mechanism? Many people haven't. There's a great book that was written in 1960 by Maxwell Maltz. He was a, um, a, a plastic surgeon. And he found that it was, it was just really interesting how people behaved after getting plastic surgery. I mean, for some people, maybe they'd have a nose job. And they'd go from this really low self-esteem to suddenly carrying themselves taller, being more confident. And yet, in some cases, he even found that he performed the surgery and maybe he took a, a, a hump off a nose. And the person didn't make that magical transformation. They'd say, yeah, there's no, hump, there's no hump there, but my nose is still big. So he really started to do some more study about, you know, the human condition. So I want you to, the best, the best example I can give you is, is a thermostat, okay? If, if we have the temperature set in this room at 70 degrees, when it gets a little warmer, it, there's a deviation from a set goal. Okay, the, the set goal is 70, and it goes above 70. And the cybernetic mechanism, the thermostat, picks up a deviation in that set goal. And so the air conditioner turns on, and it takes it right back to the set goal, 70. Okay? Now, let's think, of a, um, let's think of an autopilot. I think I have a, a picture in there of a plane. Let's say a, a pilot's taking the plane up in the air. We're going to go from San Francisco to New York. And the pilot gets the plane up in the air, and she sets on the autopilot. And then she hits turbulence. And so we go from the set goal of where we were to there's this deviation in the set goal. So the autopilot brings the plane back onto its set course. All right. Now let's take it, um, let's take weight loss. This is a big one in the U.S., isn't it? All right, so you have a person, and they go on a diet, okay? And there's this deviation in the set goal of where they've always been. And they've decided, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. There's a deviation in the set goal, and your cybernetic mechanism kicks in, and it takes you right back to where you've always been comfortable, always. You act the same way. I know. This is so hard to hear, isn't it? I'm glad you didn't put any fruit on the table. <laughs> let's take a person who um, let's take a person who wins the lottery. Okay, you know maybe this person has collected food stamps. Maybe they've gotten assistance. Okay, that's all they've ever known. And suddenly there's a deviation in the set goal. They win the lottery. They've got all this money, right? And they're not used to it. And the cybernetic mechanism kicks in. And it takes them right back to where they've always been comfortable. Ah, yeah. So this is why, you know, there, there's a lot of people that I know who are, they're seminar junkies. There are people who buy loads and loads of self-help books. I recently had a, a client who brought his entire library to me. I mean, there's like hundreds of books. But the reason why we don't see great change is that we read one thing. There's a deviation in the set, in the set goal 
and the cybernetic mechanism kicks on and, and brings you right back to where you've always where you've always been comfortable. And the trick that I found was that if you hear a message repeatedly over and over and over and over, your subconscious mind can only accept and it will start to see it as truth. But it takes a little bit of effort. You cannot hear something one time. Okay? That's my role as a coach. I take people through six or eight week coaching programs. Then we start to see some change. I promise you, I mean, I really love that you came, but you, you're going to remember maybe one or two of these concepts. And if, if I asked you in a month what you learned today, chances are you'd probably forget most of it. You got to hear something over and over and over and over and over. And then true, true change can happen. And that's what happened with me and, and my own stress. All right, now I, uh, the next sheet, I think, is one on the reticular activating system. Am I right? Yeah. Has anybody heard of the reticular activating system? RAS for short. Yeah, your RAS is really upset. Okay, it's the filter between your conscious and your subconscious mind. And it really is something in your brain. It's about the size of your pinky. And the RAS is a, it filters information that's going on all around you. Like, like right now, we're sitting in this room and yet there's, um, don't you dare turn around. There's some golfers out there. Okay, I see somebody over there. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's uh, blowing leaves. That's what he's doing. And, you know, maybe there's a little bit of a breeze. And, you know, there's, there's some sound. Co oh, I see some people down there. So there's stuff going on all over the place. As a matter of fact, at any given time, there's two million bits of information that's going on around you at any one time. Now, the trick is you can only filter 134. So what is 134 from 2 million? A lot. Okay. Okay, so what this tells us is that we are deleting creatures. And we choose to give attention to what we choose to give attention to. Now, I get to tell you this story because my husband's in the room. He knows I tell this story all the time. So I live with Bob Duncan. Bob and I have been married for five years, and there's a few things I've learned about Bob. Bob, um, you know, he's not so good at closing the cupboard door or the drawers. The other thing about Bob is after Bob makes toast, there's always crumbs on the counter, always. And the other thing about Bob is that he takes his dirty clothes. Well, no, he doesn't take them anywhere. Oh, there you go. They never make it to the hamper, ever. Okay? So my reticular activating system goes, oh, Bob did it again. He didn't close the drawer. Bob did it again. There's crumbs. Bob did it again. He didn't put the laundry in the hamper. Because my reticular, my reticular activating system chooses to hone in on that. Now, does Bob sometimes close the drawer? Yes, he does. Does he clean up his mess sometimes? Yes. Does the laundry make it into the hamper? Yes. Think about this, though. How many people in your life are driving you crazy with their little idiosyncrasies and your reticular, your reticular activating system goes, there it is again, there it is again, there it is again. You are finding references to support how you really feel. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. All right. I hope that you're. I hope you're learning something here. So, um, what do I have next for you? Here's a here's an important one. Do you have a purpose? Now, to know me, I don't think you have a sheet on it. So let me just tell you this little story. <laughs> I often say. I don't date guys, I marry them. Ooh. <laughs> you see, when I graduated from high school, I was accepted with honors at entrance at Sac State. And that was really wonderful to, to have. Um, I worked really hard for it, stressed out totally through high school. And, um, but I went into college having absolutely no idea what I wanted to be. None. 
No direction. Well, I kind of thought maybe being in a rock band would be cute, you know, cool, but I knew I didn't have the talent to do that. So, um, so I went into college, but I was offered a full-time job as a cashier at Pay and Pack <laughs> Woo! for $6.55 an hour. And I'm like, I am out of here. And I quit college, and I started a full-time job. And then I met a nice guy, and I married him. 20 years old. Yeah. That lasted four years. And then uh, I switched careers. I became an administrative assistant. And I was, I was good at that, I think. Yeah, it was, it was a good job. And then I, I met another nice guy. And I married him. Yeah. That lasted 12 years. And then um, I became a real estate broker. Yeah. And I met another nice guy. And I married him. But I'm still married to him. He's in the back of the room. <laughs> so what this, what this exemplifies is that I had absolutely no purpose for my life. And I didn't know how to find it. I had no clue. I was not given the tools. All right? Maybe high school and stuff's better today than it was when I was there. But I had no idea what I really wanted to be. And I remember even coming up with the idea of, you know, maybe being a cruise director or something. You remember the love boat? Yeah, that's my era. I'm totally dating myself. And my parents go, oh, you don't want to do that. I mean, they talked me out of every idea that I had. I love them, though. So what I want to next talk to you about is uh, something that we call the terror barrier. Now, this shows you a person that's in comfort. Now, you can be miserable and be comfortable, all right? And by that, I mean maybe day-to-day -day you're doing your job, you know, your J-O-B. You know what that stands for, right? You're going to hate me for this. Just over broke. <laughs> okay, so you, you go, you go to, to your job and you're making some money and then, you know, when you get off work, you go to the grocery store and then, you know, you cook dinner and you go home and get all that aggravation out of the way and pop yourself down in front of the TV and repeat the same thing the next day. All right, that's what we call comfort. So we're going we're gonna to call comfort X-type thinking, X-type feeling, X-type vibration, and you're getting an X-type result. This is, just, this is just comfortable for you, okay? And then one day, you go to a Bend Chamber of Commerce Success Series Seminar, and you start questioning yourself. You're like, you know what? I remember when I had a dream. I remember when I had an idea of something I really wanted to do. And somebody talked me out of it. Or I talked myself out of it. Okay? So we're going to call that idea a why idea. It's an outside, it's a why idea. This, this is like something that just comes at you from nowhere, seemingly. However, your subconscious is still an X. Your body's still an X. And what that creates is an uncomfortable feeling. Okay? You're like, well, no, I could... Wendy, no, you don't understand. I could never do that. I've heard all the excuses. Okay, I've got a family, you know. I've got, to, I've got to make a regular income. I don't have a high enough education. I'm not married to the right person. I don't live in the right place. My boss is an idiot. I mean, you, you name it. Okay, those are all good excuses. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm meaning it loving, lovingly. <laughs> all right. So now how this works is you are definitely outside your comfort zone and you hit what we call a terror barrier, all right? That's where worry, fear, and anxiety set, set in. I mean, just maybe some of you have that idea within you right now and you're like, gosh, to even think about it paralyzes me, gives me a headache, <laughs> all right? So that's what we call a terror barrier. And if you don't crash through that terror barrier, you're going to remain bound. It's very easy to get to this point and just step right back here into comfort. Well, there's another affectionate name that we have for this. It's called bondage. 
And I know you don't want to be in bondage. All right? If you never take the step to crash through your terror barrier, you will remain bound. And it's your natural state to grow. It's, if you're not growing, you are stagnant, dying. It's because it's your natural state to grow. It's your birthright to be, do, and have anything that you want. And I hope you're starting to get this, that we are the ones who stand in our own way. And it's because of the conditioning. It's because of not understanding how to think. It's not understanding how to reason. So I'm, I'm giving you those tools in a very quick way. However, I promise you that if you crash through this terror barrier, there will be freedom on the other side. Have you ever made a big decision, whether it was to buy a car or buy a house or to get married or to possibly have a child or something like that? And it was, it was scary? Yeah. You were using this. And if you actually did it, it was like, ah, okay, I can breathe now. The car is bought. The house is bought. The child's born. And that's freedom. So, you see, we go through this all the time, all the time. So I want to share with you a personal story. Michael heard it this morning. He's in one of my coaching classes. So um, about, uh, about two years ago is when I, no, I started studying this about three years ago. And an opportunity came my way to get the certification to coach this material. And at the time, uh, I was in my fourth year of real estate. That was 2008. For those of you who know, that's when everything started to die, right? And I had gone through a mission in commission uh, class. It's a Bob Proctor program. And that last year in real estate, I worked eight months, and it was my best year that I'd had in four. And I know it's because of these things that I'm sharing with you today, all right? I chose not to buy into the economy. I chose to change my work habits. I at least showed up. Most of the, most of the brokers in my, in my office didn't even show up. We had to start working differently, okay? So I got the license and the, and the certification to coach to use with my real estate team. And I had a, a, a partner and five agents under us. And we handled mostly Eagle Crest Resort. And so those are second homes. People don't need them, right? It's, you know, for discretionary income. And we were doing good. So I, I started coaching just my team, and I started running a couple of mastermind book studies, which I'll tell you more about later. And I really loved it. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is my purpose. This is it. Here I've been struggling, trying job after job. And it dawned on me that, yes, this is it. This is what you're good at. And it really resonated with me. And I could see the value. I could see the value in my team. I knew that I was getting better at the time. I mean, I was starting to pick off those medications one at a time. I knew this stuff worked. I was totally convinced. So there came a day. I did not go to art school, so no giggling out there. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's the day that I decided I need to leave real estate and I need to be a life success consultant full time. Man, was I happy. And you know that terror barrier? Worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, all of it. All of it was setting in. But I was so, so excited. And I totally felt like I was on top of my hill. So then, I went to my partner, my real estate partner, B. Leach, if you've heard of her. And I went to B and I said, B, do you consider us to be good friends? <laughs> And she says, oh, the best, the best. I go, well, I want to be a life success consultant full time. 
the tears, they started to course down her cheeks. She was so upset. And I knew that my leaving would really affect our, the dynamic of the team. And she goes, well, 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 you don't have to leave real estate. Why, why don't you just step down and, and be a buyer's agent and you can do real estate. And why don't you do that coaching stuff on the side? And then I called my mom. <laughs> mom, mom, I want to, you know what, I want to be a life success consultant full time. And she said, oh, honey, <laughs> you've, tried, you've tried so hard and worked so hard to get your, your broker's license. Why don't you just stay in real estate and do that coaching thing on the side? And then I went to the man in my life, Bob, and I said, honey, I want to be a life success consultant full time. And I could see him as plain as it happened yesterday. He crosses his arms and he says, uh, well, would you like me to play devil's advocate? No, I don't want you to play devil's advocate. I want you to support me. He goes, well, I just don't think that you should just leave real estate. Why don't you just do real estate and do that coaching thing on the side? Thanks, Bob. <laughs> In one day, oh. I know it's sad, isn't it? In one day, the three people who know and love me the most tried to talk me out of my dream. And I gotta tell you something. I was miserable. For two weeks, I walked around going, <sighs> I mean, because you listen to the people in your life, right? And they really mean well. You know, they're drawing on their own life experience and their own intuition. I'm going to tell you something right now. Your intuition is perfect for you. Okay? And others, other people's intuition is not perfect for you. It's perfect for them. All right? You listen to your intuition. So for two weeks, I'm going, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, should I. I mean, it was awful. And it wasn't until I sat down with one of my brokers, my, one of my agents, who I was coaching, and she, oh, she pulled no punches. She goes, oh, Wendy, you just caved. You listen to everybody else. I'm going, oh, no. Here I'm trying to coach this stuff, and I fell into the same trap. And I literally got up from the table. I went back to my office where my partner was, and I said, how much is the space next door? And in one month, I had done all the improvements for my Life Success Training Center that's in Redmond. Was it scary? Yes. Did I, have, did I put a lot out on the line? Yes. Did I lose sleep? Yes. Did I get headaches? <laughs> yes. But you know when you know you know? You know? You know you need to do it. Because something inside of you, your intuition, however you want, I feel it here. It tells you you got to do it. That it's your purpose. That you have got to stay the course. And it was a huge terror barrier. And I remember thinking, I, I'll spend every, everything I have to make this happen. I felt that passionately about it. And I'd never felt that before. So since then, that was, that was two years ago, I'm now in Bend also, so y'all here can meet me at the loft. I coach there. And then I also wrote a stress program. Stress standing for simple techniques for radically eliminating severe stress. And I started my own company. And so now that's another huge terror barrier to take this global. So that's the natural state though, is to keep testing yourself over and over and keep, you know, keep crashing through. If you are feeling stressed, I, I think a couple of things could be going on. 
I don't think you're, you're living your purpose, okay? And I have the tools to help you find that. And it does not matter how old you are. I'm coaching some 60-year-olds right now, and oh my gosh, I cannot believe how they've come along. And they've got vision. I also am working with um, a convicted convict who's in Madras, a dear rich. He's going to come out and he's going to adjust to society and he's going to live a life after being 18 years of a, being a meth addict. I also coach teenagers. I'm working with some lovely kids right now who are stressed out. Okay, all the peer pressure, everything that's going on in their lives and they don't know how to deal with it. So these techniques that you're learning today, I'm going to tell you something. You're in about the top 2% of the population that even knows that this exists now. Because most, most everything else is in the news, right? Exercise, eat good, get enough sleep. It's not going to cut it. I did that for 30 years. It was not enough. It was not until I got a hold of these concepts and realized how responsible I was for my own results that things started to change for me. So I hope you take something away from that. Okay, this is good stuff. You like this stuff? Okay, can't get this to turn. There we go. All right, is your last couple of sheets um, natural laws of the universe? Is that what that is? How are we doing on time? Do I have about 20, half hour? I get to talk till one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> get to hear some more of my good stories. All right. So, uh, okay, 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 let me just say this first. Again, if you've never heard this, I don't want you to just automatically reject it, okay? Have an open mind, right? I'm not talking about voodoo and fairy dust. I'm talking about natural laws that govern our universe, like gravity. Gravity's always on, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you're a good person or a bad person. If you jump off a building, you are going to hit the ground. Right? You agree? Okay. That's because we're governed by natural law. So let me go through a few of these. That cause and effect. Have you, has anybody heard of that before? Cause and effect? I always think of Einstein. What that states is that for every effect in your life, there's a cause. Okay, so when I went to the doctor and I have these migraines, which is the effect, they gave me medication. Lots of it. Lots of it. They never once tried to find out what the cause was. Now, I'm not poo-pooing doctors. There's definitely a role for them in our, in our society. And if you recall, the one doctor said you're going to have to change your thinking, right? Didn't know what he meant. But you become what you think about. So I, I, did, I, did, I couldn't put the puzzle together. So I started to ask myself, what's causing this headache? Maybe you could ask yourself this. What's causing me this stress? Is it somebody in my life who I'm giving power to? Is it, um, is it worry about the economy? I mean, if you're, it's amazing how much time you have when you don't have to worry about money. And I, I, I've worried about it too. But what I have discovered is that what I resist persists. And when I'm living in lack and limitation, there's not enough, what I'm doing is I'm perpetuate, perpetuating more of it. I told you my last year in real estate was my best, and it's because I changed. I decided to do things a little differently. And I, it, it didn't cost me anything to change my attitude about money. I just kept saying to myself, yeah, wherever the money is, it's wherever it is right now, and I'm calling it, right? Money can't, money can't talk, but it can hear. And usually we're pushing it away by saying we don't have enough. And I'm going to clear that concept up here in a minute. So just think about that, though, in your life. If, if you're stressed out, there's something causing it. Let's look at it. And if you allow me to coach you, I guarantee we'll get to the bottom of it. All right, the next one's gender. That's not to be confused with um, male or female. Uh, 
Gender is the gestation or incubation period of something. For a baby, it's 284 days. For a seed, a flower or something, it, it's, you know, it's a matter of days. But it can also be a thought. Now, I, I kind of alluded to the fact that your thoughts are very, very powerful. Oh, and you become what you think about. So I have a thought. Right there in the conscious mind. Maybe that thought is of changing my life in a really big way. Okay? And I concentrate on that thought. Oh, let's, oh, let's, just, let's just pick a number out for fun. Let's just say I want to make $10,000 in October. Would that be fun? Would that be good? Yeah? Okay. So I set a date. October 31st, I want to make $10,000. And I concentrate on it, okay? And I, and I feel what it's like to, to make the $10,000. And then October 31st comes, and I haven't made the $10,000. We see the law of gender, what it states is that there's a gestation or incubation period of something, right? So I have a thought, but it hasn't materialized into the result. Now, I tried to hit the date, and there isn't a person in the world who is aware enough to say and guarantee that this thing is going to happen by this point. We can only estimate it, all right? But what happens, for instance, you know, the first of the year, how we make all those goals, and then we're not getting anywhere with it, and we just let it go, right? Most people let go of it because they're not seeing the results that they want, so they give it up. When actuality, something is, ha is happening, let's take bamboo. There are some varieties of bamboo... You're, you're not going to believe this. If, you, if you've never heard this, you're not going to believe this. It takes five to seven years before it breaks, breaks ground. Years. Years. Does that mean that something is not happening underneath the, the soil? No. Something's happening. And then when it breaks through... Again, I'm not a great artist, but, you know, it grows something crazy like 40 feet in 30 days. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. But the same is true of your thoughts. You have this thought, you have this dream, something that you want to do, and you start concentrating on it. You hold it with your will. You're using your imagination, everything that I talked about, but you're not seeing the results, and so, therefore, you give up. Does that mean that something's not happening beneath the surface? It is. Just because you don't see the results doesn't mean something's not happening. And that's where most people fail. Okay? With coaching, you will not do that. You will understand it. And I'm, I brought this up, and I know it's a little out there if you've never heard it before. But if you know how your mind works, and you understand these natural laws, you can create any re result that you want. I guarantee it. And I've seen it happen with many, many, many people. All right? So that's the law of gender. The next one, big mouthful, perpetual transmutation of energy, okay? All that means is that energy moves into form, all right? So let's use the thought again. The thought is here. We're thinking about it. Something is occurring. Money's coming closer or, oh, oh, I got a good story for you. Who, who has seen The Secret? This, the movie The Secret, a couple of you, so you, you know what I'm talking about. So there's this great scene where James Ray is talking about Aladdin and his lamp, okay? And the, as, the, as the story goes, um, Aladdin rubs the lamp and out pops a genie. And the genie says, your wish is my command. Now, in the tradition, the, um, the genie only gave three wishes, now, let's take this to life, okay? And we're asking for $10,000 in October. And let's say, let's just pretend for a second that the genie is the universe, okay? And you say, okay, I want to make $10,000 by the end of October. And the universe says, your wish is my command. And then on October 29th, you say, this stuff doesn't work. And the universe says, your wish is my command. 
Don't forget, you become what you think about. You have got to be clear on your intention. I actually had somebody come in. I, I said, you know, I, I, oh, I hold classes all the time. And um, I asked this lady, oh, hey, how you doing? And she said, not bad. <laughs> all right, here's a trick. This is so far off the subject, but i got to share it with you. So she says, not bad. Now, here's a trick about your subconscious mind. It cannot process a negative. Your subconscious hears, I'm bad. Can only accept. Subconscious mind can only accept. Here's, a good, here's another good one. How you doing? Can't <laughs> complain. Ooh, okay. A couple of people are really paying attention here. Subconscious mind hears, I complain. Think about that. And I ask you, well, how's your financial situation? Not bad. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Can't complain. Right? And the universe says, let's hear it louder. Okay. Set a clear intention. Okay? We're usually, you know, if I ask all of you what you want, I bet most of you would tell me what you don't want. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to, I don't want to complain. I don't want to be negative. Um, you, you name it. Okay? You're getting the picture, right? So you're going to be aware of this, at least for today. And you're also going to be aware of the other people in your life. Oh, my goodness. The things that they are throwing out to the universe. All right? So the perpetual transmutation of energy is that thought, that intention moving into physical form. What are you doing? I mean, I'm not blaming you, okay? I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the tools. I did it too. And nobody ever taught me this. I had no idea I was creating these really, really bad effects. Because I was not sending out a clear intention. I was focused on what I don't want. And as a result, my subconscious mind didn't process the negative, and so I got everything that I didn't want. Are you getting this? Okay, awesome. All right, the next one's polarity. Polarity states that everything has an opposite, okay? Where there's inside, there's outside. Where there's up, there's down. There's hot, there's cold. All right, so everything is on this scale, if you will. And so let's think about um, maybe, you have, maybe you have a physical problem, okay? And maybe it's stress-induced, and you're really feeling crummy. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you're like, uh, oh, I have to go through another day of this. Oh, another headache, another stomach ache, whatever that might be for you. And instead, I know that my subconscious mind can only accept. And so I decide to change my thinking. Hey, I feel great. I feel energized. I feel like I have a purpose today. You know, I always ask the universe to put people in front of me, put people in front of me that need to hear what I have to say. I want to help somebody today. And so polarity is, you know, maybe you're not feeling so good, but you think about the opposite, and it can really shift you. I wish I could remember the reference. I was just reading a, a Dr. Wayne Dyer book, and it was talking about this, um, this experiment, and it was on the, the Discovery Channel. And, and what this doctor did, a surgeon, what he did was he took uh, three groups of people who all had arthritic knees and was going to perform surgery on all three groups. Now, the first group, he performed the surgery, and the results were great. They all came through it great. They all had improvement, as expected. And then the second group, all he did was scrape the bad, I guess, cartilage, scraped it. But that group thought that they had the whole knee surgery, okay? And they also had astounding results. Now, the third group, he acted like he was doing the surgery. Um prepped them, splashed water, even made three incisions, 
but didn't perform the surgery. And the results were utterly astounding. They healed just as well as the other two groups. I can, I've got the documentation. I, I think it's called Beyond Excuses is the book. So thereby telling us just the power of our own mind. And I, I believe that I can talk myself into being sick. I know. I, if I really concentrated, it'd be harder now, but I could, I can literally give myself a headache by what I'm thinking about. And I can also get rid of one. Think about that. Polarity. Okay, relativity. We've all heard about relativity. Um, relativity is the relationship to, or it's an item in relationship to something else. All right? All right, I just drew a box. This box just is. It's not big, it's not small, it's not skinny or fat, it just is. Okay? Now, it's not until I draw a bigger box next to it that this is suddenly a smaller box and this is a bigger one. All right? That's the law of relativity. Now, I bring this to your attention because I would like to know, you don't have to answer it out loud, just be honest with yourself. How often do you compare yourself to someone else? Oh. What other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> All right. So we do this a lot, don't we? Oh, I didn't get as many sales as the person next to me. Athletes do this. Is an athlete absolutely tremendous in their own performance? And then somebody, you know, if they're a runner, somebody else runs just a little bit faster, and then all of a sudden, they're inferior. And it sets them into this tailspin. Look at golfers. Look at professional golfers. Any golfers in the room? A couple of you. Have you ever gone out and played, and somebody else is playing better than you, and your game just goes, yeah, because you're comparing. It's the law of relativity. So I'm going to caution you to take yourself. You are unique all by yourself. There is none of us in the room who is like anybody else at all. And that's the beauty of being an individual, isn't it? That each and every one of us has our own unique talent and ability. And I just think that's cool. So um, anyway, think about this the next time you compare yourself to somebody else and say, stop that. I don't have, you don't have to do that. Okay, that's the law of relativity. Okay, the next one is rhythm. The law of rhythm states that everything in life ebbs and flows. Where the tide goes in, it goes out. The sun comes up, it goes down. Um, fall turns into winter, turns into spring. That's nature. It's a natural law. And the same is true for your life. You are not always going to be just screaming with your hair on fire. I mean, it's, it's just, it doesn't happen that way. Things in life ebb and flow. Now, the important thing to remember is that when things are down, and, and the same is true of the economy, okay? It is going to go back up eventually. And the same is true in your own life. All right? So it's nothing to get discouraged. If you understand the natural law, you know that not everything in life is just going to be awful, that things will eventually turn around. And your intention, your ability to focus on that will make it faster. All right? Now, the last one is absolutely my favorite, the law of vibration. Has anybody, well, some of you saw the secret. That was about the law of attraction. And attraction is a sub-law of vibration. Now, the law of vibration states that everything, everything, everything in the universe vibrates at a different level, okay? Water vibrates at a, a liquid level. Um, something that's solid vibrates at a, you know, a solid level. But you and I vibrate too. Remember in the beginning of the talk, I said, you know when somebody's in a good mood or a bad mood? 
That's all you're reading is their vibration. And there's some people like me getting out of the car. Oh, here to test drive my Lexus. That was vibrating high. And the salesman was vibrating low. Okay. Now, the important thing to realize about vibration is that it attracts like energy. You get up in the morning and you are late for work. You haven't had your coffee. Okay. Um, you got to get the kids to school. You, you finally get to work. Boss yells at you. And it's like, oh, great. This is going to be a great day. You're vibrating low. Okay. But I want you to think of yourself as being a magnet. And you are literally attracting back to you like energy. Think about that. Okay. I look at it like this. I, I always see like I, I'm putting my mood on a boomerang and I'm just whipping it out there and whatever comes back is what I'm emitting that day. Now, I want to share another study with you. This was done in Harvard. How many people are in sales in the room? Okay, quite a few of you. All right. So this is Harvard. They did a study on rate of vibration. Rate of vibration. And in this study, they took people and rated their energy. Now, I don't know exactly how they did this, and I'm sure that this is subjective. I'm sure that my energy is probably, you know, different than yours. But you and I can rate our own energy Subjectively, can't we? I mean, I know when I'm in a sucky mood, and I bet you do too. All right. So in this, in this university study, they took people on a scale of 0 to 1,000. 0 being dead, okay, and 1,000, they were really humming along. And what they discovered was that the average person vibrated at 250. 250. So I take this to mean like, uh, you know, it's my average day. Um, I'm, you know, I'm getting up. I'm going to work, do my work thing, get off of work, go to the store, make my dinner. You know, I'll, it's an average. Or I go into Fred Meyer. I would think Fred Meyer. I'm going grocery shopping. Everybody in there, all they want to do is just get their groceries and go home, right? Average. Now, what they also discovered is that a person who is vibrating 500 or above if they were in sales, listen up, they were doubling their sales. Doubling their energy, their attitude. They, they were up because they were attracting back every condition, circumstance, and person that they needed to make the sale. One of my mentors, Steve Siebold, he's, very, uh, he's a highly paid um, public speaker. Um, works in corporate America. He rated himself before, during, and after sales calls for a year. And it got to the point if he wasn't vibrating at 500 or above, he would not even pick up the phone. And I used to do this with my real estate brokers. If they had an attitude, I said, don't go do an open house. You're wasting your time. Go home and get an attitude adjustment. Seriously. Seriously. Now, the person rated highest in this university study was at a whopping 900. And that was... <laughs> Me? Is that what you... <laughs> I only aspire. Okay. President Clinton on his way out of office. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but I don't happen to think that President Clinton was like, you know, the best looking guy. And, and I know that he had a few indiscretions, and we sort of overlooked that, you know. Put him in the office, you know, twice. You know why? Because there was, he always did this, right? He never pointed. He did this. Because he has charisma. He has a magnetism about him. There's something about him that he is able to connect to people. You think about that for a second. You become what you think about. Now, I've been telling you all about your mind and how it works. I've, I've given you the tools to figure out why you have screwy ideas even. <laughs> okay? 
I have shared with you, if you don't have your purpose, you're not going to be vibrating high. But I can help you with that. Okay? And I've also given you the tools of these natural laws of the universe, just like gravity, always on. You think about this as you go forward in your day. And if you've got a bad attitude, think about how you can change that around. You know, for me, I love to listen to music. I, you know, it, it shifts me. Or maybe I read something inspiring, or maybe I watch one of my mentors, or, um, you know, maybe I call a friend who's, who's of a like mind, and I, and I brainstorm. You know, I, we share things. Maybe I go out for a walk in nature. Maybe I play golf and not keep score. You know, whatever I need to do to make my energy good, okay? So for each and every one of you, it's going to be different, but I'm sharing with you this right now. If you can raise your own rate of vibration, you can be highly, highly, highly successful. You've got nothing to lose by trying this. Nothing. All right. I kind of stated that repetition, you need to hear something repeatedly in order to really gain true, true change. Okay? And so I offer a couple of free events for the community. I'm really passionate about what I do, in case you didn't pick that up. And uh, I do, I, I, at my own expense, give four hours to the community weekly, two in Redmond and two in Bend. All right? On Mondays, I am at the Loft of Bend at 919 Bond Street. And um, if you want to know more about the events that I do, there's a small sheet that's attached to the back of your packet if you'd like to share your email with me, I would, I'll be happy to put you on my mailing list. So, and I send out one email a week, okay, not 50, one, to tell you what I do. So what, what I do is I, a free book study of Think and Grow Rich, the, that book I was telling you about that was written in the 30s by Napoleon Hill, and, and I do 15-week studies on that, and it is fabulous. I mean, the things that you will learn are utterly amazing. I mean, that book, you pick it up now and you're like, are you sure this was written in the 30s? Because it seems like it's now. It's so poignant. So I do that and then directly, oh, and that's at 11 o'clock, 11 to 12 at the loft. And then from 12 to 1, I do an event called Momentum Monday. And that is what I call mental toughness training. What I want for you is to aspire and attain high performance a high performance mind, okay, to give you some tools to recognize within your, yourself when you're derailing yourself. So I invite you to that, okay, and that's from 12 to 1 every Monday at the loft. The same events are done on Tuesday in Redmond. So if some of you live in Redmond, my training center is over there by um, Fred Meyer, and I do the Think and Grow Rich from 11 to 12, and then 12 to 1 I do what's called Think Tank Tuesday, and that's also the high performance mind coaching. All right. Now, let me get to just tell you a few words about the stress program that we have a raffle for. <laughs> the stress program, I, after I went through my ordeal, I realized I needed to share this information. Um, some of you may or may not have migraines, I don't know, but I know the numbers. 300 million people get a migraine every year. <laughs> 300 million. And you know what? I don't think that anybody needs to suffer from stress. I did enough for all of us, okay? And so I wrote the program. I, I shared very succinctly many of the things that you saw today, but it's also on CD. Now, I told you repetition. What we do is we listen to one CD every day for a week because your subconscious mind needs to, to hear it over and over and over and thereby we can get change and you do a little work in the workbook and then in week two you listen to CD2 and you do some work in the workbook okay so at the end of six weeks I've shared all the tools that you will need to eliminate stress and I ran many people through the focus program last a year ago over a year ago had astounding results, not only with mig migraineurs, but people with anger management problems, relationship problems, problems at work, um, lots of people with, you know, that just, they, they think they're going to be sick over the economy and their own state of finances. It's really powerful. So at the seminar, I'm offering a special, 
If you know somebody else who might benefit from this, you can buy one and get one free today. So it's $99.95 for two. For two. And so I designed it to be a home study course. You don't have to have me to do it. Okay? However, if you are interested in coaching along with it, I'm knocking $100 off the coaching rate and brought it down to $395 if you want to sign up today. And that's for six coaching sessions with me. It's just you and me, baby. <laughs> okay? And they last about an hour. And so we'll work it into your schedule. So that's all, you know, if you want. And then um, what else do I have to tell you? I think that we have um, a raffle. Yeah. All right. Should, should I open this up for any quick questions, perhaps? That'd be perfect. Any more, any more evaluations? Okay, one more working. Any questions? Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. This is your time. Our stress levels should be very well. Yeah, how's your stress level? Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard a fabulous and wonderful. Oh, good. We don't have to get medication for any any of them for what they learned. They, oh, no, I'm going to take control of my life. Okay, you get to draw. I do? Yep. Okay. Pick one. Pick one. We'll just uh, go right there. That's the one. That's the winner for the stress. Deb Kraus. Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Congratulations. And one more. Okay. All righty. Sarah. <laughs> Is that Latanza? Latanza. And this is our speaker gift for you. Thank you. Thank you very, very Thank much. You very, Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Anyway, thank you for sharing this time with me. It, it means a lot to me that you invested in yourself, invested your time. And um, in return, I'd like to offer you a free coaching session if you'd like to take me up on it. Okay, if you are interested in that, fill that out on the sheet. Make sure that I get it at the end, and we'll get something on the calendar, all right? All right, thank you so much. Oh, Diana? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is your stress program subliminal or is it? It is not. I'm not that sophisticated yet. <laughs> However, that being said, a couple that I'm coaching, they have a really neurotic dog. <laughs> they, they, they say it's like the terror dog or I don't know they, they have some name for this dog they, uh, it's a crazy dog and they put my CD on it jumps up on the couch puts its head, head down and sleeps so maybe <laughs> we don't know for sure yes yes it's six CDs so it's audio All right. Well, I'd like to thank our speaker for coming today. And thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> hmm.